Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Yeshi Chonsom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 12th of May. Indian Railways resume partial passenger train services amid lockdown. Pakistan starts easing lockdown despite a spike in COVID-19 infections. And Nepal reports largest daily increase in COVID-19 cases, Delhi reaches 191. And now for all the details. Indian Railways on Tuesday restarted the passenger train services with special trains beginning operation from capital New Delhi, connecting various cities amid lockdown. The move comes nearly two months after services were stopped due to the nationwide lockdown imposed as precautionary measure to contain the spread of COVID-19. The Indian Railways restarted passenger services on Tuesday in a phased manner with 15 pairs of trains nearly two months after services were stopped due to the nationwide lockdown imposed as precautionary measure to contain the spread of COVID-19. The trains will run as special trains from Indian capital New Delhi station connecting to 12 cities including Mumbai, Chennai and Bengaluru. The first run of the special train began from New Delhi to Bilaspur. A mix of eagerness, anxiety and joy was visible at railway stations as the passengers geared up to boarding stations. After that, we came to the railway station, there is also a very good way here. Everyone is social distancing. So, we want to go to the safe house. The move comes as India's coronavirus infections reach 70,756 with 3,604 more COVID-19 cases reported in the last 24 hours. As per the tally, 46,008 patients are active coronavirus cases and total number of deaths has risen to 2,293. Earlier, Prime Minister Narendra Modi at a video conference with Chief Ministers on Monday said that a lockdown would continue in some form or the other even after May 17 and asked them to submit the broad strategy to deal with the lockdown in their states till May 15. News Justin a suicide bomber in eastern Afghanistan killed and wounded at least 50 people in an attack on the funeral of a police commander attended by government officials and a member of parliament. No militant group claimed responsibility for the attack till the last reports came in. Moving on, Afghan government has temporarily halted the release of Taliban prisoners till the Taliban frees a total of 200 Afghan security forces in their captivity. The Afghan government contends that although the Taliban has released a higher number of detainees as per peace deal with the US, not all of them are from Afghan government security forces. Afghan government has temporarily stopped the release of Taliban prisoners, saying the Taliban must bring its total number of release security force numbers to 200, while so far they have only freed 105. Javid Faisal, a spokesman for the Afghanistan National Security Council, said on Monday that the government will not release more Taliban prisoners until the group reciprocates with the release of 200 more pro-government captives, according to a local media outlet. Amit Kabul's holding the process release, Taliban spokesman Suhail Shaheen on Monday said they released 53 more Afghan government prisoners on Sunday and Monday in Faryab and Badghis provinces. The Afghan government contends that although the Taliban has released a higher number of detainees, not all of them are from Afghan government security forces. In March, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani ordered the faced release of thousands of imprisoned Taliban fighters against the backdrop of his earlier refusal of the United States' constant demand to do so as part of the U.S.-Taliban deal signed back in February. In addition to releasing the prisoners, Ghani vowed to assemble an inclusive negotiating team to sit across the table from the Taliban. However, the political crisis in Afghanistan, where Ghani and his political rival Abdullah Abdullah have declared themselves in power, has badly affected decision-making around peace talks. Pakistan started easing their lockdown on Monday as coronavirus cases in the country passed 32,000 despite the country reporting some of their biggest daily increases in new infections. According to official report on Tuesday, 759 new cases were detected 
in the past 24 hours in Pakistan. Pakistan started easing their lockdown on Monday as coronavirus cases in the country continued to rise, despite the country reporting some of their biggest daily increases in new infections recently. According to official reports, the number of confirmed cases on Tuesday stood at 32,081, with 759 new cases detected in the past 24 hours and 38 new deaths bringing the toll to 706. Pakistan officials have said small markets and shops would be the first to open with restricted hours, while big malls and other spaces that attract large crowds will remain closed for now. Schools will stay shut until mid-July and a decision on reopening intercity transport would be made at a later unspecified date. Those are all SOPs that we will follow so that we can get from coronavirus and our work will be able to get from our work. Because in the past 50 days, there has been a loss of the Arab countries in Karachi. Most shopkeepers said they were following all the safety rules laid down by the government, but medical experts say they are worried the easing could lead to a further spike in infections. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan said the easing of restrictions aimed at helping the country's most impoverished citizens would be lifted in phases and warned people that the epidemic could get out of control if they did not take precautions. More in news from Pakistan. Pakistan's coronavirus lockdown has been a blessing in disguise for emerging painters who are displaying their work at an online exhibition gallery. Artists claim the extraordinary time has allowed them to turn their inner thoughts into artwork and display it to the art lovers through the online portal. For Karachi-based artist Zahir Mirza, Pakistan's coronavirus lockdown has been a blessing in disguise. 45-year-old Mirza is one of the emerging painters whose work is now being curated at an online exhibition gallery, My Art, sponsored by Art TV. The artist says the solitude has allowed him to turn his most inner thoughts into artwork. इससे पहले की जिंदगी ये जो थी वो अब जब आप देखते हैं कि आप एक भाग दौड़ में चल रहे हैं मुसलसल एक दौड़ में हैं और अब आप जब रुके हैं और आप जब आपने रुक के देखा है और आपने इसको महसूस किया है कि मुझे क्या करना है मुझे क्या नहीं करना तो एक तरह से खुद से एक गुफ्तगु खुद से एक मुलाकात हुई है और इस खामोशी में जब आपको मैसर आती है और आप कोई मुलाकात करते हैं अपने आप से तो उस वक्त ये चीज़ बहुत अहम होती है कि वो आप अपने दिल की आवाज़ सुन रहे होते हैं Art TV founder Farhan Qureshi claims it is Pakistan's first purely online exhibition of artwork. Qureshi said he had received hundreds of submissions, but only works by 62 artists have been displayed at the online exhibition gallery. You can say that it is a uniqueness that the first time online an exhibition a process through artists and displayed it displayed. The online gallery has received praise from Pakistan's artist community. In news from Bangladesh, people in densely packed Dhaka slums are living at high risk of contacting COVID-19 as the outbreak continued to spread in Bangladesh. The extreme poverty and a lack of information mean some slum dwellers may not be fully aware of coronavirus situation in Bangladesh, but almost all are feeling its impact. People in densely packed Dhaka slums are living at high risk of contacting COVID-19, said residents and a medical expert, as the outbreak continued to spread in Bangladesh. Many of the dwellers work as rickshaw pullers, daily wage laborers or domestic helpers and have been out of a job during the pandemic. In Mohakali Korail slum, the largest slum in Dhaka with more than 100,000 residents, many people were seen over the weekend going about their daily life as usual and without face mask. Hospitals in the capital have been providing virus tests, but many slum residents said they were not aware of anyone who had been tested. <laughs> Protector, 
গরিব মানুষ পেডের তাগিতে তারা করোনার ভয় পায় না তারা এই পেডের তাগিতে আছে আর কি বাধ্য হয়ে থাকতে হয়েছে করোনা তবে এই এলাকা করোনা ভাইরাসের এখন রোগী মনে হয় শনাক্ত হয় না আমরা The extreme poverty and a lack of information mean some slum dwellers may not be fully aware of the coronavirus situation in Bangladesh but almost all are feeling its impact. Ta bosti bashi amra shobai ei coronar bitre ekotro to manush achi kintu amader kono shastho seba nai amader kono manush eshe kono khuj khobar nai nai amra shobai ekotrito bhabe khub kaj korme ei coronar bitore khubi jhukopurno bhabe ashe Bangladesh reported a total of 15,692 cases of the virus on Tuesday with 239 deaths. Nepal on Tuesday confirmed 57 new cases of COVID-19, the highest single-day rise in coronavirus cases till date taking the nationwide toll to 191. As of Tuesday, there are 33 successful recoveries from coronavirus in the country with zero mortality. Fifty-seven new cases of the novel coronavirus were identified in Nepal on Tuesday, taking the national tally to 191, confirmed the health ministry. This is the highest single-day jump in COVID-19 cases so far in the Himalayan nation. Among the new registered cases, 39 are from Parsa, 9 from Ropandehi, 8 from Kapilvastu and 1 from Bara district. All of the infected people are males. Nepal as of Tuesday recorded 33 successful recoveries from coronavirus with zero fatality. The country had confirmed its first COVID-19 case in February and second case in March, after which it has been placed under nationwide lockdown. Meanwhile, amid rising cases, Nepal government has planned to adopt monetary and financial instruments through the budget to cope with and reduce the impact of COVID-19. Indian ambassador to Nepal Vinay Mohan Khwatra, who was summoned by Nepal's foreign ministry, reiterated New Delhi's stand over border dispute. Ambassador Quatra also handed over a copy of Indian Foreign Ministry's response to Nepal Foreign Minister Pradeep Kumar Gyawali. Nepal had earlier objected to the inauguration of the link road to Kailash Mansarovar region by India, terming it a unilateral act that runs against the understanding reached between the two countries. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh had on Friday inaugurated the link road to Kailash Mansarovar Yatra via video conferencing. Following a strong objection from Nepal, India had said the road going through Uttarakhand's Pithoragar district lies completely within the territory of India. The chariot building work, which is a major step to ring in the annual chariot festival in Puri district of India's Odisha province, has formally begun amid the coronavirus lockdown. The authorities are hopeful that normalcy will return in India before the chariot festival scheduled to begin from June. Hopeful of normalcy returning soon amid coronavirus pandemic, famous Jagannath Puri Temple in India's Odisha province is building chariot for an annual festival next month. The construction of the chariot for the grand festival started from Akshay Tritiya, an auspicious day for giving the chariot festival the ritualistic push. Question on whether the chariot can be rolled out at all this year because of the coronavirus pandemic is doing the rounds. The high level meetings are being held in this regard. As per the decision taken in the temple managing committee and subsequent approval by the state government and central government, so the chariot construction work has begun from yesterday. India is observing a country wide lockdown since late March to curb the coronavirus spread, but government has allowed some relaxation in low impact and no impact zones. Restrictions on gatherings are still in place. The majestic 15-day chariot festival is being celebrated for the past 1,000 years, which attracts millions of visitors from across the world. This year, it is set to begin on June 23rd. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.